welcome back to the channel. Blue Oval Dude here. I am uh, just coming back to you. I am uh, had a request for an oil mod video. Um, some of the mods that I do to our Fords. And um, if you don't know, the last, I made a series of three different videos um, going into exactly all of the mod modifications I do to the oiling system on, on a Ford. And those three videos, someone said that it was copyright infringement and I was using their material and YouTube took them down. So some dude named Paul Kane, who I don't know and have no idea of any of him or anything he does, but he tried to say that I was using his material and his copyrighted doing these oil mods. So whatever. I'm just a dude that's been doing this to these engines and other Ford engines for a long time. So I have no idea. This is just me working right here uh, in my pole barn on my own stuff. So <laughs> I'm gonna get into this and I've got this uh, Windsor over here that's on the engine stand. And this one is already done, so I can't show you all the stuff. I've got an oil pump. I just so happen to have one oil pump sitting over here on the bench that I have not done yet. Maybe I'll do that sometime for a video right now. I'm not going to do it. So I'll just show you um, right here what has been done on the block and on the crankshaft. And we'll just go with that right now. <laughs> all right, guys. So... All right, I will probably start off with the crankshaft here and just show you what was done to that, which is pretty simple stuff. So, um, here, we'll go over here, right here. All right, so, sorry about that. All right, if you can see right here, right there, these oil galleries have been chamfered on this crankshaft on the mains and on the rods. So this is one thing uh, that I do to them and I take, well not that one, sorry. I take a die grinder, double cut die grinder like this, or double cut burr I should say, and of course hold it very steady and I just lay it down right across here with it running not real high speed, but pretty kind of medium speed. I think you use about 30 to 40 PSI right in there on, is what I'd run it on. And just, you have to be very steady so you do not mess up these journals. And if you need to get them ground, or you need to get them, um, uh, I can't think of the proper term, but <laughs> smooth out. Um, for some reason it escapes me at the moment. But anyway, before you take it to the machine shop, do this if it hasn't been done already. Chamfer right here on the rods. And the same thing. See, I just lay this down on here and get it done. And right here on the main. And just grind that out. And so that'll allow uh, more oil flow to travel up to the rod journals. So that's what's done on the crankshaft. And now, over here on the block, I can show you what we got going on the block. I will grab a flashlight here so I can go over that. All right, and usually I start over here at the filter pad. And uh, one thing I will try and get in there, but I'm gonna point it out and then I'll try and give you a shot. Um, Inside of here on the oil filter adapter, this has the standard Ford adapter. My other engines, they have that T Meyer uh, filter, filter adapter kit on it, and this one does not. And anyway, if you take off this filter adapter, inside of here, there's a bunch of sharp edges that can uh, impede the flow. And this oil gallery is what feeds the entire engine block. Uh, the oil comes in the oil pump, which sits up here, gets pushed into this hole, comes out here, goes into the filter, and then it goes into here, and then it feeds all the oil galleries in a block. 
So I'll take a shot in here, see if I can show you anything of what's done in there. And I'll try, but I don't know if I can. It's just a hard shot down in there. You can kind of see it down in there, but normally there's a big sharp edge and you can kind of see where something has been done. So that's all been radiused and laid back right there and smoothed out inside of that oil filter adapter. You can kind of see it. All right, so that's one thing. Uh, number two thing, of course, is what is the most obvious to the eye here is what's been done to the filter pad. And what's going on here is I take the die grinder and I radius all these edges back all around here on both sides and I'll smooth that oil flow out into the oil filter so that it can more easily travel around this corner and around this corner and go into the filter easier and you can get more oil flow that way. So that's something else. And then on the bottom of the block, oops, on the bottom of the block right here, all right, this oil filter pad right here, this one, I lay my uh, oil filter gasket on this and then I'll mark it and I will take this out to gas gasket match this entry. So that's something that's done there. All right, I'm going to turn the engine block here real quick so I can kind of look at some of the other stuff. All right. Now I'm gonna just show you a diagram real quick of that filter pad. So, all right, right here where this goes through here, this oil gallery, see, there's my screwdriver. That is just drilled straight in from the factory and straight down. So from the factory, this is what it looks like. They just drill it straight in and straight down. So you have this straight 90 degree angle right here that really is not good for flow when you're trying to move fluids or air or what have you. So what I do is I try and radius this corner and smooth this all out. And when I'm done, I want it to look something like this nice rounded corner and what I'll use for that is I'll take a die grinder and this is what my right here a ball style a double cut burr and I'll take that and I will grind it from this side and I will do the same thing from back here and up this way and you can see it in there and I'll pull it down around that corner pull it backwards around that corner to make that nice round and radius. I can take a quick shot of that so you can see it. I think you can see that in there. There you can see that's a nice corner right there so it's easy for that oil to make that corner and travel around there instead of just a straight 90 degree angle it's got to cut. So that's another thing. Um, I'll just put this back and I'll show you some other stuff here. All right, um, all right, right here, I'll show you. Uh, you wanna make sure that these oil galleries, all of them, line up well on the bearings. And I'll show you one that did not line up well, which was number three right here. Now it does now because it's been uh, ground out. So I have a small um, double cut burr, a real small one that can go in here and, and fix this. So you can see that this hole right here, this is the oil gallery that feeds the bearings, the, you know, all this stuff on the bottom end. Feeds your main bearings, feeds your rod bearings, and it feeds your can bearings. Right over here is the can bearing. Okay, so I will take this out, and you can see that this, this is lined up pretty good right now, that hole. I'm gonna show you what it looked like before. 
there. You can see that it's pretty flat sided down here now. You can see the used to be round and it used to be way back over here. And maybe it doesn't look like much on camera, but if you can see this uh, in person, it's actually quite a bit that's been taken back. See, normally they'll be round just like that. And that one I kind of laid back the edges and gave it the opportunity to, for more oil to actually get there. So that's one thing to watch, is to make sure that your upper bearings are lined up well and they are getting good oil supply. So there's that. All right, now we'll move on to another part, which is your oil drain backs. And right here is an oil drain back, and you can see that I've taken the die grinder and laid this back. See that? And radius this edge right here so that that oil wants to come down here and follow the back side of the block, rather than I'd rather have it go here than falling onto the crankshaft and rotating assembly. And it can go back easier, you know, if we just lay that back. So same thing on the other side. Over there on that drain back, we do the same thing. Smooth that out. And of course, um, all right, I think I have to turn this over now to show you some of the other stuff. So I'm gonna turn this block over real quick and I will show you that. Kinda of hard to do with one hand here. Holding the camera. All right, here we go. Here we are on the top side of the block. So, on the oil drain backs, you can notice here that these are no longer just a straight edge right here. And this corner right here is, is normally raised up. So I lay that down and radius all of the edges and make this nice and round all the way around here. On the, this is the back of the block, if you don't know. Same thing on this side. Lay this corner way down because there's usually a little bit of hump here and we want it all to drain back as easily as possible to get that oil back to the pan and not sitting up here. So this whole corner gets radiused and I usually radius this one on the back of the block. Right here, these oil holes in the middle. I don't usually do these. I will do the front one. And here's a big one where oil, for oil drain back, it's good to get more oil through here so that it oils the timing chain a little bit more, it oils that um, a distributor gear more and uh, that kind of stuff. So normally this hole is way up here. You can kind of see where the round part should be. Sorry about that. You can see where the round part should be. So I lay that way down and I make sure to smooth this out and radius this edge right here so it's nice and smooth so oil can get in there real easy. And if you're hitting the brakes or whatever oil is draining down, it'll go through here a lot easier. So that's another area. Another area, um, I'll just show you this here, is you may or may not see this on camera, I'll try and get it, but these drain back holes where the heads bolt onto the block. This is oil drain back, what goes down through here. All right, so when you lay your head gasket on here and you mark it out, and if there is any that is overhanging, you want to radius that and make sure that none of that is covered up by head gasket and it's opened up so that oil can flow back easy on all four corners of the block. You can see this one is there, can you see that? You can see right here, I hope you can see on camera that this has been radiused and it's a little bit larger. So that on the back of the block, same thing on this corner. Now you can see, kind of see the radius going on here that I've got. So that's been opened up. So oil drain back from the heads coming down and same thing over in this corner here. And that oil drain down. All right. Of course, you want to uh, smooth out and radius the drain backs that are on 
in your heads on the front of the head up here that matches up with this and on the rear of the head that matches up with this. So you want to smooth those out, radius those edges. You want to make it so you get a lot of oil drain back as easy as possible. Get that oil out of the heads and back to the oil pan. Uh, on the front, I'll take you up here and show you real quick. On the front, uh, or up in here, right here is oil drain back from that head that comes back. There it is, see it? That goes through the deck. This is how it gets back to the pan. So I will usually just take and uh, radius this edge right here. And sometimes I will cut a little bit of groove right here in this area because this is also where that distributor gear gets oiled right in this area. So it doesn't hurt anything for some of that oil to go back there and uh, oil that distributor gear up. And also the same thing on the other side. Right here is, there's that. Drain back over there. So radius that so that oil comes back and drains out as easy as it possibly can. <laughs> and um, I believe that's all I can think of for right now. The, um, you know what? There is before, before I go on and say anything else, talking about uh, these oil galleries and, and pathways and all that, I want to, uh, it, it kind of reminds me of, of a verse in the Bible from uh, Matthew 7, 13 and 14. It says, enter by the narrow gate for the wide, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. So, that's what I was thinking of today anyway, when I'm thinking about oil galleries and, and all this stuff, and, and uh, narrow passageways and uh, things like that. So, the other part of this is, of course, your oiling. All right. Your oiling so of course a larger oil pan you know if you can do seven quart eight quart you know whatever you can fit in your car that's gonna be better also um, things like uh, windage trays um, you know sumps and trap doors in your oil pan uh, things like that are gonna help it out and of course what's also gonna help is modifying that oil pump so that it can uh, move oil easier. I, I'm not a fan of high volume oil pumps. I'm gonna say that now, I've said it before. I'm gonna say it again. I'm not a fan of high volume oil pumps. They're pretty much not needed. The factory pump is plenty big. It does plenty enough flow. You can just modify it so that that pump uh, has higher pressure and can flow better. And then it's uh, less stress um, on that distributor gear and on your camshaft. So, uh, I think I covered most of it right now that I can with this block. So, I hope that helps you guys out. Um, one second here, guys, flipping this back on so I can see myself again because I can't see myself right now. <laughs> there I am. All right. So guys, uh, remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe. And you can also check out on Instagram. Once in a while, I put on some pictures on there. And if you need to email me, uh, 472capri at gmail.com. All right, until next time, keep wrenching, keep racing, keep having fun with your hot rods, guys.